Good morning, folks. We're all business today. One month ago, we looked at the planetary geometry for the end of March and noted a potential for increased solar and terrestrial unrest. It was noted that for the largest effects on Earth, there would need to be an Earth-facing coronal hole. Well then, how about two? Both enormous and one of them transequatorial. Earth doesn't give mixed signals. This was quite clear. Readings came in mostly between 7.3 and 7.8, a very large earthquake. The USGS first came in at 7.6, then bumped up to 7.7, and now has come back down to 7.5. Overnight, we also had quakes hit 6 magnitude range south of the Philippines and in China. There were no major tsunami warnings, but a 2-inch wave was detected across the region. The buoys picked it up as a minor blip, but don't be fooled by an error reading that is also in the region. There was not a 100-foot wave generated two hours after the quake. The big one will count as an earth spot rumble with the typhoon just to the north of it. It was even closer yesterday when the tremor struck. It's heading towards the Philippines now, but we're not done with seismicity. The Samoa Islands are having a rough evening as two 6.8 earthquakes have struck just 30 minutes apart. That means we've got to at least be on alert for something bigger. I hope not. Back to our usual starting block, solar flaring still in C range only, and most are coming from the departing sunspots over the north, which have been tremendously active since getting out of Earth's view. I guess they were a bit shy. Anyway, our top eruption threat today is filamentary. The dark ropes writhing all over the north and south are highly active and bound to begin destabilizing soon. The sunspots are much less of a factor right now, as they've got the size but no magnetic interaction. Very simple beta class here. So this morning we're seeing some increased density to the solar wind, but with speed and plasma temperature still dropping. The proton density takes a cut at the electrons, but the stream itself is not any more hefty than the previous hours, and Earth's magnetic shield is in good form this morning. Back to this. Shifting day by day, the heat is now running up the eastern side of the convergence that leads up to a low in Canada near the Hudson Bay. High pressure node in the central states is aiding the convergence and bringing the cool in behind it. Tonight's only storms will be along that Boeing convergence, but they'll come back to the central part of the U.S. midweek. Be on alert. This is why I asked for the weather shares from this region. 65 miles per hour winds are illuminated by the pressure overlay. That is a major low there, lowest on the northern hemisphere actually, driving the clouds around the convergence line wrapping around it, and hopefully you're seeing how that convergence is more important than the pressure node itself. Down under, the wind is doing some odd things, but the precipitable water overlay shows us that the same line as yesterday is now reaching the east coast as well. Also got a convergence to the south that really wants to reach up to the South Island of New Zealand. Got your current conditions and shots of our star to close. We can hope the quakes are done, but the factors are high, so eyes open. No fear. It's 6.05 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.